Hello everyone and welcome to Crossing Pass Television. Today we're going to have a great show. We're going to talk about something that has affected probably nearly everybody, whether directly or indirectly, and has destroyed so many lives. So uh, yeah. you're going to want to stay tuned for this one. Uh, Ron, why don't you tell us about uh, the, the guests that we have today? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, as Mark said, you're in for an awesome show today. I, I just I, I thank you for tuning in once again. I thank you for all your support. And um, I'd like to take this opportunity now to introduce to you Dave Morrell. He's going to tell you a little bit about how he came to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Then we're going to get into addictions. So if you know anybody that's struggling with any type of addiction, please get on the phone right now. Call them and tell them to tune into this show. I'm telling you, you need to hear what this man is going to share. Hallelujah. So Dave, why don't you tell us a little bit about your testimony, brother. Hallelujah. Well, first, first uh, Pastor Dawn, Pastor Ron, and Amen. Mark, I would love to uh, give thank you for giving me the honor and the privilege of uh, being here this morning on Crossing Pass. And I would love to share what the Lord Jesus Christ is, has done and is going to continue to do in my life. Um, we'll go back to, obviously, um, when I was a child. I grew up in pretty much in Fayette County. And uh, my mom and dad were, um, before I came into this world, were a church of the brethren. But I, on hand, was, I grew up then, they become uh, Pentecostal. So my parents, as far as my mom and dad, I never saw them drink. They didn't do drugs, nothing of that sort. And I had two older sisters and a sister that went home to be with Jesus at birth. But very early, and I never realized this until later in my life, that obviously my earthly father um, was under the teaching of the law. And it was... Very tough for me to understand that I was the only boy, uh, his only son, but without a doubt, I, my father cut me off spiritually as a child. So he was there physically, but not, he wasn't there for me, mm -hmm. for me. So at that part, I was probably within a doubt, 10 or 11 years old, I picked my, up my first drink of alcohol. Wow. Which was going to lead to a major 35 year addiction with alcohol. Mm -hmm. Along with that became the, the other addictions along with that, whether it be uh, uh, tobacco, but uh, you know, I dabbled in some, some marijuana and some, some uh, uh, hash and things like that. But the, the main addiction was alcohol, of course. Well, then come along the lives of pornography and other things. And this is in my early years as a child. Mm -hmm. And just going through that, and what was so very strange to me was the fact that my dad went to a church and then my mom went to another church. And I'm thinking, what, where's, what's wrong with this? This is not right. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm seeing, and, I, and then I became ashamed of my earthly father mm -hmm. because he didn't take, I, I, there, was, there was, other than going to church or Sunday school, that was it. And the God that I knew from his teaching was that God would strike me dead if I stepped off the curb or out of line. Mm. Not a loving God yes. that, that, that I know today, yes. that I know today, praise God. And, and, and through that, all through that, so it again, as, as, as John 10.10 10 said, that the thief come to steal, right. kill, and destroy. And that's what he was doing to me as a, as a little boy, separating me out to take me out. Through, and, and so anyway, through all of that, I, I, I grow up in there, and again, it, it just the alcohol taking over, being about me and nobody but me. I get married uh, at probably the age of 21, and uh, we're, we're married young. I have two children. We have two children, uh, me and my former wife, um, a, a son, and also my daughter, seven years apart. But again, the alcohol became even greater and greater and greater because again, it was about David in, in them days mm -hmm. and, and doing the work of what Satan was, in, it was attempting to do to steal, kill, and destroy me. So through that, I was, I was very much on the road to prison or to death. Many times I, I woke up and I, one of the things was so crazy about it, my addiction was I was afraid to really dabble in drugs 
because I was afraid of dying. Mm -hmm. But every day I was up to maybe a, a, a fifth, two fifths a day in, in alcohol, and I'm thinking, where are you at with this? So my, I mean, my whole life was just a battle, was a shipwreck. So I, you know, through that, I ended up in, in, in trouble with the law, uh, and, and again, different things going on there so greatly in my life. But the fact is then, I, so there comes a divorce. And, you know, that was a whole shattering thing. And my, my children, my son was just coming out of the Marine Corps. Um, he came home from uh, Japan and was devastated by this. Our daughter was uh, seven years uh, younger than her brother. Um, devastation there, again, to destroy the relationship in that family, which the enemy obviously, again, to, to do. And, but again, I would not let go of the addiction. I would not let go of the addiction. So let me ask you this. Even though your parents would the, would, was Pentecostal or wherever, you knew what the deal was in church, you never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? No. no. So all this time you were still lacking that father that we talked about. Yes. So you really, when your father let you down that way, you was lacking the heavenly father also. I, 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 Pastor Ron, the thing being is that as a little boy, uh, I only ever recall being... Um, dedicated, but never baptized. My sisters were, but I wasn't, and I, I couldn't understand that. But I, I believed in Jesus, I believed, but never, never uh, to accept Him as my Lord and Savior right. uh, through that time, no. And one more thing I want to I want to make a point of here is when Dave says that he was addicted to alcohol. A lot of people today were in this window of the opioid addictions, or you guys know all about Dawn's story in the streamer and in, in the movie they're doing on Dawn's life about addiction. But people think today, well, oh, alcohol is legal. But we see it so many times, they call it a doorway drug, it's an entrance. It's a way that the enemy has access into your life. Because I have a lot of family members that deal with addiction, alcohol. Yes. So that was the main thing that really led you into all these other, yes. this destruction like you yes. said. Yes. And, 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 and again, it was just completely, I mean, devastation. And, and, and God says in His Word that that I, we as men are to be the priests in a home. Amen. And, and, yeah. and all of that. And, and, and at that point, the relationship with, with, with my former, <laughs> uh, obviously, was devastated. It was devastated. Uh, my children, my, my, my youngest daughter was so ashamed of me. Um, just because of, of, of the things that I did. And my, and my son, my son, my, our oldest, um, definitely fell into the addiction of alcohol as well. Same thing. So, same so, thing. Yeah. Same, the pattern, mm -hmm. the pattern going there. My grandparents, my grandparents, I didn't know my, my, on my father's side uh, for most, but my grandfather, uh, my mom's dad, was an abuser, uh, full-blown alcoholic. So the alcoholic behavior from my mom came up through that generation. It wow. came up through there, but, but it, it came down right through the line that, I, that I've always seen, understand today, but I didn't know back before I come to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the devil was trying to kill you, brother. He had you hooked on alcohol, destroyed your marriage, was trying to destroy your life. I mean, it's just a, yes. it's a pattern, you know. The Bible tells us that we're not supposed to be ignorant concerning the devil and his schemes. And this is just what Dave's sharing. This is just a short part of his testimony. Listen, if you're out there watching today, it's not by coincidence. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And this is exactly what you're seeing in this man's life. It's a textbook story on addiction and the destruction of the devil. So, okay, what happened? You, you got a divorce? Yes. Then yes. what happened after that? So, so we get, we, I get a divorce. Obviously, uh, the home was lost in, in a sense. So I move over, I move over out, of, out of Fayette County into Westmoreland County. And again, I, hmm. I was a total wreck. I was lost. I was lost. At that point, as we know, Jesus will put people in your life Amen. at that yes, very well. breath. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he, and it, Thank you, Lord. Wow. And he did. He did. He put a precious, precious, precious jewel in, in my life, who is my lovely wife, Diana, today. Oh. And, I, and, and God's Word says in Isaiah 119, if we be willing and obedient, we'll eat the good of the land. And in this case, she asked me, 
she asked me, we were just dating back then, and she said, David, would you like to come to church at Word of Life Ministries with me? And I said, I'm thinking, Pastor Dawn, Pastor Ron, Brother Mark, I said, wow, this is a beautiful woman. I, why wouldn't I? And, I? and I grew up, I knew they were non-denominational. But I thought, well, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll go, I'll go. So, her, but, but the thing being, and we've spoke about this, that pastor, that Diana was willing and obedient by God. She heard God say, ask David Amen. to come with me. That's ask right. David to come with me. After that service, it was back then, we were, Pastor Tom was just doing the 830 service, and there was no altar call, there was nothing. Mm. But after the service, I stood up. And I was broken. Amen. I was totally, totally, Hallelujah. totally broken. And that's when I gave myself to, to, to the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. You know, Amen. Dave, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, some similar to my testimony. We're going to go to a, a segment here that's just going to fill right in Amen. with what you're saying. You know, but let me say this too, and I think Mark and us, we all know, everybody comes from different ways to meet the Lord, right? You probably came to be like, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. A lot Amen. of people can't understand that, I mean, that statement, but there had to be a better life. You know, my, my wife was behind me, my second, my new wife, Joyce, my, it wasn't a coincidence. God just let you go till you got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen. And you're on TV today. See, so that's why testimonies like this, we're not saying that it's right to do this, right to do that, but we need to find a way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, Amen. the life. No one comes to the Father Amen. except the Son. So you never had a personal relationship and you were under bondage. Like you said, there's no freedom in what you were brought up in, in a sense, right? right. So we're going to go to this segment, something to think about. Just listen, will you, please? Hi, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to today's show. And it's an honor, a privilege for me to be able to share this message today on something to think about. Today we're going to go straight to the, to the Bible. That's where we get all of our answers from. And we're going to turn in your Bible. If you're, if you're at home and you have a Bible, please feel free to tune in with us. We'll be reading today from Matthew, the 24th chapter. Now get, get a hold of this. The disciples were alone with Jesus up on a mountain and they brought him away privately. And they asked him a very important question. They said this in Matthew 24, verse 3. Now as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, Lord, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of thy coming in the end of the age? So listen, even when the Messiah was privately alone with his disciples 2,000 years ago, they had a desire within them to know what would be the signs of thy coming and also the end of the age. You know, my friend, I hear a lot of people say today about these big atomic bombs and these nuclear warheads and the world's coming to an end and all those things. The world's not gonna end that way because listen, the Messiah is coming back to the earth and he's gonna set up his kingdom on this earth for a millennium, which is a thousand year reign. But you know what? The reason why that should be so important to you is, is you better know who Jesus is. You better have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so you really know what's happening. I believe we're living in a time right now unlike any other time in the history of the world. When we look at these verses, one of the key ingredients of all the prophetic scriptures that God has ever given in the Bible is Israel becoming a nation. We understand in 70 AD the temple was destroyed, the temple of God was destroyed by the Romans. And then after that, we went into a period called the Dark Ages. And then at about the year 1500, the King James Version of the Bible was created. So for the first time, we had a Bible in our English language. So now here we are, we're in year 2018, 2019 now, and we're looking at these Bible prophecies. How close are we to the end? Well, we know one thing, in order for Jesus to come back to Israel, there had to be an Israel. So Jesus could not have come back before 1948. So Israel had to become a nation, and we know that happened in 1948. Now here we are in the year from, 19, from 2018 to 2019, so we're about 70 years away from that time period. It's a window in God's time that we need to understand. Look, soon, I believe soon the Messiah is returning. And Jesus said this, 
he gave them, this is Jesus' answer. It says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no one deceives you, because there's a lot of people out there today that are really deceived. For many will come in my name, saying I am the Christ, and they'll deceive many. You'll hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. All these are just the beginning of sorrows. Then they'll deliver you up to tribulation, and you'll be killed and hated by all nations for my name's sake. See, my friend, listen. These are signs that Jesus gave. I'm not reading today's paper. You might have thought I was reading today's paper, but I'm reading out of the Bible. God has given us a window. He said, when you see these things begin to take place, you're to lift up your head. He says later in this same chapter, he said, listen, this generation shall not pass. So from the time that Israel become a nation and you begin to see all these signs that we see today, know this for sure, this nation is not gonna pass. So today we have, we've lifted up our heads and we're looking for the return of the Messiah. So I really would like to encourage you today to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. You have a great opportunity. There's no coincidence in the Word of God. As a matter of fact, God doesn't even have a word for coincidence. So for you to tune into today's show is only by a divine appointment. So please seize the opportunity. We're gonna get back to the rest of the show. And at the end of this show, we're gonna give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as both Lord and Savior. I encourage you to do that. So let's get back to the show. Thank you for that message, Ron. As I think about this story, I think about how, you know, you grew up in, you, you were in the church, but you were kind of disconnected about what was really going on, the reality of life, that there, there really is an adversary that's here to destroy us, that we're in this fallen nature, uh, that we want to please the flesh, that, you know, we don't really have the wisdom of God when we're born. That has to be taught. That actually goes against our very nature. Amen. Uh, you know, so it's very easy to see the things that, that Satan will bring in front of us, the thing that the culture of the world will put in front of us and we'll taste it. Or that looks fun to go out and drink and party or maybe do drugs and, and it maybe start off innocent and just this appeal. There's a certain appeal to it in our flesh. Yeah. But Amen. over time, it'll start to get worse and worse and all these things that look good the underlying result is death Amen. to where it will start to destroy your identity, who you are, your peace, your relationships, your family, all these things. And you might get into a place where you never thought you'd be. You never meant to be there. Amen. But that's how Satan works. And that's, that's kind of, I think, why we have this massive epidemic with opioids around here and Amen. all these different things. They don't, it's not like they go out to destroy their lives or their family's lives. It's just mm. there's this appeal that it hooks them. Amen. And now they got to get free from it. And really the only way to get free from that since it is a spiritual bondage, is spiritual freedom through Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. 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 That's right, Mark. You know, you said, Dave actually said this right, right before we took the break. He said in John 10:10, 10, 10, it says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So listen, if you're out there today and you're struggling with any type of addiction, it could be alcohol, it could be sex, it could be pornography, it could be drugs, whatever it is, there's a number at the bottom of the screen. I really encourage you, call that number. Everything is said in confidence. We'd love to take the opportunity to pray for you. And even if you're not addicted yourself, you may be a family member of someone who is. You may be a husband or a wife or a brother or sister of, that you know that someone that's struggling with these addictions and this loss of identity. Please call in today. So Dave, let's pick it up where we left off about how you accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Amen. Savior. And Amen. You had this Praise transformation. God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Dave, I'm going to say real quickly if I say this. Did this become alive? Exactly. I mean, you, mm. a lot Come of people on. go to church and they've never picked the Bible up once. I'm talking about churchgoers now, okay? Right. No desire to read the Bible, right? I know for me, when I would read as a kid, it just was boring. I was like, how could this change anyone? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't really have that relationship. But then once you have spiritual discernment, once you become his, yeah. she... And you were a Catholic background, but you never sure. read the Bible either? Well, I tried. It was just too boring. Just too boring. Know? Yeah. And then once I really gave my life to him, it, be, it, it became exactly. alive. It was like a whole different book. Yes. Yeah. 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 Pastor Tom Absolutely. got you guys in the Bible over there at Word of Life. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and going back. So anyway, so Diana, she, she invites me, willing and obedient, uh, you know, and I'm praising God and I'm crying. And Pastor Henry Tlercio, uh, <laughs> wow. I mean, he's the one that I, I went to the altar with and prayed with me. And... Uh, 
I know his testimony and, and love him dearly. Uh, we had some we had some words uh, because again I was still trying to do it David's way. But 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 through that was Pastor Tom at, 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 at believe it, it was at that, at that very service. He he and I know God knows what he what we need. So he says he held up the Bible and he says here at Word of Life Ministry we. Do not deviate from the Word of God. We preach, we preach the Word of God. And I know, and I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that so deeply. And he said also, I'm a, I'm a drag racer. Uh, I had my former drag racing car years ago. And he said, and we also like big block Chevys. And I said, I looked at my, looked at my lovely wife at the time. I, well, it was, my, it was my girlfriend, soon to be fiance, lovely wife for 13 years. But I said, you know what, I'm going to come back. I've been here, praise God, I've been at Word of Life for uh, uh, 19 years. Amen. 19 years. So, so through that, so then comes along, Word of Life was hosting Cleansing Stream Ministries, uh, was doing a big retreat at, at back then uh, out of Van Nuys, California. So she said, again, would you like to come to uh, this retreat? And I said, once again, hey, God, give me an opportunity to hang out with this girl, I'm going. So we go and I said, what's this about? She said, they, they, they're going to come in and they're going to have topics and they're going to do teachings and you go up and get prayed for whatever you feel the Lord's leading you. I said, okay. And what she said, and David, in your case, you just go up for everything. She said, every, every, everything imagine you go up for. You need an overhaul. <laughs> you need an overhaul. <laughs> so I go up, I go up and I'm going up, for, obviously, to get called for, for coming for alcohol. I go up. And I can remember that, that one of the intercessors started praying for me. And when it was over, I probably had six or eight. God delivered me from a 35-year addiction with alcohol Ooh. in a blink of an eye. Amen. And every guy, praise God, he gets the glory Hallelujah. and the honor for that so tremendously. And so through that retreat, then God is, 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 is moving upon my life. And what Brother Mark said was not so much, I like to read, but not so much. And what Pastor Dawn, you said was back then, but now I am getting in deeper into the word and reading the word. But it was God, the relationship that was, was God was fulfilling in me as the Holy Spirit come upon me then to grow. And through that, it, it, Pastor Tom, I, you know, I, Pastor Tom, Pastor Henry, and, and all the other pastors, we were so blessed at Word of Life. We were so blessed. And my A-team, but I'm, I've been uh, with, with Freedom Ministry, but up through them has opened up the doors and, and the ways to be able to, me and Diana co-facilitate with Joe and Jenny Barnes, Divorce Care. We, we, we're in Freedom Ministry uh, to set the captives free with the, what we call our A-team. So dearly, brothers and gentlemen, that, that, that again, that the enemy once again was trying to, to tell me that, you know what, they don't want to hear you. Mm -hmm. You don't want the secret. No, God gets the glory and praise because I am set free. Amen. I'm set free. So where I was at to who I am today and, and glorifying, I, I became a, uh, in the drag racing world, God opened up the door for me to become a chaplain for, for uh, in the IHRA end of it awesome. for um, uh, Godspeed ministry and races for Christ on the NHRA side. But these things is just so so powerful and he's and I believe without a doubt he's moving and this has been on my life it's been on my heart for many many years that I'm a talker uh, Pastor Tom knows that and I hope praise the God I'm not messing this up but he knows that I love to share the love of the Lord Jesus Christ he called me when Pastor Ron and him talked and he said and that's why I knew this was definitely Amen. of God because right. Pastor Tom told Pastor Ron David Merrill David Merrill for this for this time so I know, I, I, mm, mm, mm. Amen. wow, thank you. Thank you. amen, praise God, you get the thank glory, Lord. Yes. Amen. Thank God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. The anointing's definitely here today, you know, you can feel it. <laughs> and that's because you're seeing you know, about and, and, a, a life and, that's transformed. And back then, too, not that, I, not that they weren't, but that hearing, hearing of, you know, Leonard Skinner or ZZ Top or, or, you know, them guys were rock and rollers. And I went to concerts and I couldn't even see. But now Crowder, Crowder's my boy. He's, he's me and Diana's boy. <laughs> Bethel, uh, you know, we were coming up here all the way, coming riding up for the trip. And Crowder was jamming, uh, you know, uh, Hillsong United. That's who's in my heart. Them, them, them guys are, and through that ministry is mighty. And my, and, and I tell you one thing I want to say, guys, praise God, glory to God. My daughter, my, my youngest daughter that I, mo I mentioned a, mo a little bit ago, 
God gave me the greatest gift of life. Mm. He gave me the greatest gift of life. Amen. She was falling apart. The, the addictions and, and her husband, her former husband, left her. She went, he went to Texas, but in, the, but in the, that, she called and she's in Mont, Great Falls, Montana, and she said, Dad, I'm, I'm falling apart. I said, sweetheart, I want to lead you. Will you let me lead you to Jesus? Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. And it did. And she, her, she is serving the Lord. Amen. She, a new husband is serving the Lord. Her, our, our granddaughter received wow. Christ like five years ago. And the little boy, the little boy, he's going to be a praise and worship leader. He's seven years old. And he, and he knows the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Can you imagine that? Acts 16, 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ yes. and thou shalt Amen. be saved. And thy house. house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You Glory set an God. example, which I'm trying, which Ron trying, we all do, and we fail. Don't know any kid yourself, right? We're Christians under construction. People, you've heard that testimony. I know I came from the ground background that he did and so Amen. forth, you know. Some people Hallelujah. never drank in their life, but they're as lost as I was. Mm. See, if you don't know Jesus, religion isn't the answer, you know. No. We have a little booklet here, it's called, What Just Happened? If you said that prayer, if you say this prayer, when I say real quickly here, ask Jesus to come in your life right now. There's no long sinner's prayer. Yes. Just say, I'm a sinner. And we will send you this book, and I will send you a Bible free. We'll pay the postage, people. That's how impressed we are to do the works of the Lord here. Mark, all of us support the ministry. We need $7 a month or $70 a year to keep us on in your area. That's all I ask about money. We don't spend any time. All we know is we want to spend time on salvation. Amen. You've heard the man, never been on TV, TV before that I know of, sat there, told his testimony. Where do you stand? See, there's a telephone number out there, 724-981-7777. There's another number there too. Call it, people are standing by. God bless you, we love you here today. Amen, Amen. hallelujah. There are over 10 million problem pathological gamblers right now in America. My life was engulfed in that total lifestyle that I was living. Compulsive gamblers, pathological gamblers, are like full-blown alcoholics. They cannot help themselves. They cannot stop. They will lose everything. I really wanted to stop, but I didn't know how to stop. 